um, the, 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 the landlord for the building where we had a church. I tried to ask her because of uh, COVID-19 now. Uh, most people, churches are churches not really operating. Most people will not be able to come to church to give. Is there a possibility for us to negotiate on the rent price? He said, no. <laughs> he said, the rent remains the same. <laughs> okay. So uh, we still have to give. Amen. Uh, that's not a problem. Amen. We still have to give. We're not going to find an excuse to try and reduce. Amen. So that's another reason why we need to give. But amen. As children of God, we know it's our duty and uh, it's our mandate to give. Amen. I was just with my colleague. Right now, when we're fixing ATMs, you are saying, no, I have a problem with, uh, with tithing. Tithing was supposed to be for the widows and for the poor people. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so many believe. So I was trying to explain to him. He's saying, yeah, but how come the pastors are driving Land Rovers and the pastors are driving all sorts of big cars and their members are struggling? You know? So I told him, listen, Giving to the poor is needed, it's necessary, amen. But do not neglect one and focus on another only. So, uh, it's just trying to help him, but it's very difficult. He's not saved, amen. So, very difficult for him to understand. But, uh, want to give in the house of God, want to be faithful, amen, uh, regardless of what the world might think or say, okay. Uh, and the account number, I normally put it up in the uh church channel will place the account number there uh, for you to just, uh, if you are unable to carry cash, amen, you can be able to do an online transfer in the church account, amen. Uh, so let's be faithful in doing that. So believe those are all the announcements that I have this morning, amen. We can move to the book of Luke. Chapter 10, if you have your Bible. Luke 10, I don't really want to keep you for long. Most of you already waited for me, amen. I was, I was attending with the ATM and uh, maybe you got tired of sitting. But anyway, let me not take long. Luke chapter 10. Uh, we'll read the scripture straight. Luke 10, 38. If you are there, you say Amen. amen. Luke ten thirty eight. Bible says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was... Uh, Cumbered about much serving, and uh, came to him and said, Lord, doest thou not care that uh, my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and are troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Okay, we know this familiar story. Amen. Here is Martha. The Bible is saying she's worried, she's concerned, she's troubled about many things. And she's getting so busy. Amen. Uh, and I mean, no, the reality is we as human beings, we don't know. We don't we are unable to see through other people's lives. Amen. <clears throat> And uh, here is this lady, she's just busy, she's doing all these things, she's complaining about her sister. But then Jesus Christ is able to know what is wrong with Martha. Amen. And he tells her, Martha, the problem with you is you are too worried and you are too troubled about many things. Amen. So this morning, I'm going to speak about things that bother us or that trouble us. A message I've entitled, The Monkey on Your Back. Amen. Now, when people speak about a monkey on your back, okay, what they basically mean is uh, there are certain things that trouble you or that bother you for a long time that you're unable to deal with. Okay? 
the monkey that is on your back. Things that trouble you, things that bother you. And no doubt, like I'm saying now, amen, Martha is troubled, Martha is disturbed, amen, she's worried, and she's going about uh, trying to maybe forget her troubles. But Jesus Christ, amen, was able to minister to her and say, listen, Martha, the problem is um, that there is something bothering you. Now, first down to look at how did the monkey get on your back? Right? So, there are things that trouble us. There are things that worry us, right? But the question is, um, how do these things that worry us and trouble us get on our back? How is it that they get on your nerves? Now, number one, things that trouble you, amen, come from your past. This is past experiences, can be disappointments. It can be bad treatment, amen. And through this bad treatment or through this disappointment, before you know it, there is a monkey on your back. Through this disappointment, amen, something gets attached to you that is going to haunt you, is going to trouble you most days of your life. So many people, amen, when they start talking about their life, they always refer back to the past. Things that happened, and this is what we call a man, a monkey, that got on your back. And it's not allowing you to rest. You are being troubled day in, day out, um, night, amen. Um, you are troubled about your past, amen, or past choices that you have made. It can be decisions, wrong choices that you made in your life that will bother you until this day. See, Decisions are very much critical and crucial in our lives. I remember I was preached to once a, a, a message on decision making. And if you are somebody who is not able, amen, to make uh, right choices or, amen, uh, difficult decisions in your life, you find yourself, amen, making wrong choices that you are going to live to regret all the days of your life. And this can be a monkey on your back. All you are thinking, amen, is um, can that day just come back so I can make another decision? And you wish, amen, and you pray, God, um, if it's possible, can we be able to erase that day? I would have made a different choice. Maybe it's a day, amen, uh, whereby you had a choice to steal or not to steal. And um, that very day was the day you're going to get caught. And now you have to live with that for the rest of your life. Wrong choices, amen. Uh, you are going to regret things that you have done. You have been warned probably by your parents, um, probably by your peers, amen, or by your leaders, whatsoever the case may be. But what happens is through you making a decision, a monkey gets on your back that is going to disturb you that is going to haunt you and you will not find rest for your soul. Martha is disturbed. We don't know what happened, but obviously there's a monkey on the back because in our text, there's no reference to what had happened to Martha. Jesus doesn't tell him and something happened or we're not told that something happened. That's why Martha was troubled. But seeing this, amen, it shows us that it's something that Martha has been carrying for a long time. <clears throat> We might not be able to see the monkey with our physical eyes, but the monkey is there. Amen. amen. It might have been a past uh, amen, experience that Martha had uh, that she's always thinking about. The disappointments or the bad treatments. It might be, amen, uh, a decision that Martha had made uh, that is now haunting her. The other, amen, the way that the monkey gets on your back is... Um, by the words that people speak or words you speak by yourself. See, people have the ability, amen, with words to say something to you that will forever remain in your heart with you. I've seen people, amen, words have been spoken to you by somebody that you loved or that you adored so much and just because this word was said by this person, you will never forget those words. You know, especially when fathers say things. Because, I mean, you know, we all adore our fathers. Okay? 
But if your father says something to you, it's going to remain. Pastor Joe Campbell was preaching a message we watched the other day, and he said his father said something to him when he was young. And he says, until this day, imagine he's now over 70 years old. Until this day, that time I believe was 12 or 13, he still remembers those days like it was just yesterday. Because words um, can be able to leave a monkey on your back. Perhaps it can be a simple word like you are ugly by somebody you love. Amen. And because they've said that to you, you feel ugly. Or maybe you are stupid or you are dumb. Amen. And now you think, you know what? Why do I even bother to study? I'm stupid. Why do I even bother to try and look to the future? Well, I'm stupid. And a monkey has been attached to you. Number two, I want to look at falling in love with the monkey. See, it is possible for you to start loving what haunts you. It's possible to fall in love with the monkey on your back. This is a man number one by allowing the monkey to determine your mood. See, here is Jesus, son of God. Martha, Mary is at the feet of Jesus. She's excited because Jesus is here. All problems are gone. But Martha, in the midst of while Jesus is there, she's still in her mood. She's still angry with her sister. She's all mad, amen, because why? The monkey is controlling her mood. And some people, amen, are the monkey on your back starts to determine your mood. Whenever you want to move on with life, you are reminded about either a past experience, a word, a past decision that you have made, amen, your mood totally changes. And everybody around you, amen, you treat them badly, amen, everybody around you, amen, you start to, uh, you start to probably just close yourself, you don't want to talk to anybody, you just want to be, amen, isolated. Why? Because you are just having a, a pity party with the monkey on your back. You are feeling sorry for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. See, the Bible talks about the young man called Absalom. Is Absalom, his brother, or his half-brother, raped his sister, Amnon. And uh, Absalom was so angry that, the, and this was a monkey because uh, he's feeling bad for his sister. How could this guy do this to my sister? How could he rape my sister? Amen. And he got so worse that the Bible says Absalom ended up killing his brother. See, that's what the monkey on your back can do to you. You end up killing people. Amen. You end up hurting people so that you can be able to please uh, the monkey on your back. You remind yourself about the monkey all the time. Like I said, years can go by, 50 years, 20 years, and you still remember it vividly like it was yesterday. And you keep on, amen, playing back um, this monkey, amen, on your back. You keep on reminding yourself, you keep on refreshing what was old. You bring it up, you chew on it as if it's new. And that is a sign that you are falling in love with the monkey on your back. Every decision you make in your life is uh, determined by the monkey on your back. See, people make decisions about their life, about their future, based on their past experiences, based on, amen, what is haunting them. You know, have you ever heard somebody say, I will never get married in my life? Well, probably it's a past experience. Or somebody says, you know what, all women are the same, or all men are the same, the list goes on, amen. It's because they've heard, amen, a bad experience in the past, and they got a monkey on their back, and now, amen, every decision about your future is filtered through the monkey on your back. You know what, I'm not going to... uh, I'm not going to, 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 to get married. Why? Because, uh, amen, uh, in the past I've seen how people or how my parents at home have lived a life being married. The decisions about your future are dictated by the monkey on your back. And later on what happens is the monkey defines who you are. 
Who are you? The way you see yourself is just through the lens of the monkey. What the monkey tells you, amen, that's who you choose to be. Whatever experience you had in the past, whatever wrong choice you have made, amen, and people, I mean, people talk when you make wrong decisions. Oh, you yourself say words upon you. Say, you know what, I was so dumb, uh, so foolish. And you start to, and you look at yourself as this, you know, I'm a weak person. I'm just too weak. Uh, Amen. Uh, And uh, this monkey that has gotten on your back, uh, it defines you. It tells you who you are. So do not fall in love with the monkey on your back. Lastly, I want to speak about getting rid of the monkey, man. Because like I said, having the monkey on your back is not a big problem. But the problem we are facing now is uh, people not being able to get rid of the monkey. Let's read in uh, John 14. John chapter 14. From verse 1 all the way up to verse 3. Listen to what the Bible says. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If if it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus is saying, Amen. Do not let your heart be troubled. How do we do? How do we not allow our hearts to be troubled? By bringing your monkey to Jesus. That's the only way. Amen. So, this is like a commandment. Amen. God is saying, don't let your heart be troubled. So, meaning, it's a choice for you to allow your heart to be troubled or to be what? How many of you have seen? There are some people, amen. You have gone, they have gone through a lot of things in their lives. But they are not allowing their past to dictate their future. Okay? But at the other hand, there are some people, because of the garbage they've picked up in the past, amen, uh, their future looks bleak, and, uh, and they see the future through, you know what? My past is my future. Yeah. What has happened in my past will most definitely happen in my future. So bring your monkey to Jesus. Jesus said, Amen. Um, bring all your troubles. Um, do not be heavy laden. Amen. Um, uh, he says, Come unto me when you are weary, when you are tired, and you will find rest in Jesus alone. Number two, you need to renounce everything that the monkey has spoken to you. Every, Amen, uh, 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 disappointment or bad treatment that you have received in the past. You need to renounce these things. You have to open your mouth, amen, and speak words of life. um, Words that people have said to you, amen. Um, You have to talk back, amen, and renounce them in the name of Jesus. So you can't just be there, say, you know what? Yeah, this thing is bothering me, but you're not doing anything about it. So basically, when you speak about renouncing, that means you have to pray about the monkey on your back so it stops troubling you you have to command amen and you have to allow jesus christ and the peace of god to reign in your heart thirdly you have to read your bible constantly see reading the bible is more than just a spiritual exercise or more than just you know you trying to exercise or fulfilling your spiritual duty let me say but reading your bible is renewing your mind. So when you read the Bible, amen, what you're doing is uh, you are putting something new in your mind. And uh, the old things can be taken away. Now, there is a question of uh, how do you get bad water out of a glass when it's filled with dirty water? How many of you have ever seen, have ever tried that ex- experiment? See, when there's a glass and there's dirty water inside, how do you 
remove because the water is always to be there. How do you remove, amen, this dirty water and replace it with clean water? So you can't do that by just emptying the glass. So what you do is uh, the more you pour in clean water, you start to realize that the, the dirty water is going out and only the clean water is remaining. The same thing, amen. The more you read the word of God, the more, amen, um, you put in, you consume the word of God, amen, you start to renew your mind. And later on, you start to see, amen, you are thinking differently. You know, uh, my wife was watching last night this movie, Overcome. I watched it, amen, a couple of weeks ago. And here is this young girl, about 15 years old. And uh, this girl, uh, she believes her parents have passed on. Um, she's living a, a difficult life, amen. But then, the question that uh, her trainer asked her is, uh, who are you? And you know, the reality is she knew who she was. And even the same with the trainer first, was asked that question by the girl's father, who are you? He says, you know what? I'm a coach. I am this. I am that. And basically, all those decisions or all those uh, Things that is defining himself are dictated by what? By the past. <laughs> and this girl as well, amen. But then the moment this girl read the Bible, we see the whole difference, amen. That after this young girl had read the Bible, the teacher told her, you know what, just go and read Ephesians. And the moment she was done reading the book of Ephesians, she came back and she was able to tell Amen. Uh, uh, her trainer, who she is. Because through reading your Bible, you are able to understand who you are and uh, why God had created you and for what purpose. So we need to get rid of the monkey on your back. Heads about as a close. Amen. Want to pray.